Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to dive into one of the questions that's been on my mind and that I've been asked a lot recently. Will the Nintendo Switch 2 CPU hold it back at all? It's a pretty simple question, but it's got a lot of depth to it. And today we're going to dive into that. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. That way you can catch my future tech videos, which I try to make at least one a week, depending on what's going on in life. And if you like this video at all, make sure to smash the like button. The YouTube algorithm isn't my best friend. So you just doing something as simple as liking the video really does help me out in the long run. I really appreciate all your support. And finally, one thing to keep in mind is there is a lot of things that have yet to be officially revealed by Nintendo. Now we have a lot of reliable leaks and rumors. We have patents, but there's a lot of things we've seen to give us a lot of the information that we go on in these videos. But I want to be clear, until Nintendo comes out with official concrete information on a lot of things, and we have hardware in our hands, a lot of everything we talk about at this point in time is just for fun. But a lot of the information we do have is from reliable sources with good track records. So I think there is a point to talking about these videos. So with that understanding, let's just go ahead and dive right into this. So while making my last video and researching the leaks and rumors we have so far for the Switch 2 hardware, I couldn't help but keep thinking about the 8-core 1.1 to 1 gigahertz clock speed CPU we received information on. I also received a lot of comments asking if the Nintendo Switch 2 would be able to run more advanced current generation games. GTA 6 being a prominent one of mention and my thoughts on the low frequency CPU and it being able to handle this. Now while I covered the GPU and the Switch 2 in the detailed video here in the top right hand corner of the screen, I definitely didn't go into the Switch 2 CPU at all. And it's something I would now like to talk about after the attention put towards it in my last video. So let's dive into the Nintendo Switch CPU to get an idea of what we are dealing with based on the information we have about this CPU already out in the wild, which is an ARM Cortex A78C. This A78C is a more secure and slightly smaller variant of the A78 non-C, primarily designed for laptops. The 78C is a big feature set CPU that allows for up to eight CPU cores, as well as different combinations of little weaker CPU cores, and goes up to 3.3 gigahertz. It also has an eight megabyte L3 cache. Now, before I continue on these specs, I want to make mention that Nintendo reduced the capabilities of the Tegra X1 chip inside the Switch 1 to improve battery life and to have better heat control and likely longevity. And Nintendo will be doing the same with the Switch 2. We can already see this based off the leaks of the Switch 2 claiming to have a 1.1 to 1 gigahertz clock speed for its CPU, which is about a third of what the A78C's big cores are capable of for their max frequencies. It's also unclear if it will have the same size L3 cache consoles typically reduce this, such as the Xbox Series consoles and PlayStation 5 with their Zen 2 CPUs, but we'll have to wait for more information to be revealed to exactly be clear on all of that. Until then, what we do have is basic information, such as its leaked core count, as well as clock speeds. But we also have comments from Famiboard's user Matt Again, who is a known developer who has worked in the video game industry for a long time and has provided valuable insights in the past, where he said the Nintendo Switch 2 CPU is not a cause of concern from developers. And although it deviates quite a bit from other hardware and consoles, the Switch 2 still has 8 CPU cores. But the base 8 core CPU count is the key here. We also can't fully judge performance between the x86 AMD CPUs used in these consoles and portable PCs to the ARM CPU in the Switch 2, but it has been suggested that with the 8 cores and the power of the A78C, even at the lower clock speeds revealed, it's not as concerning as people are making it seem. The reason for this is because developers can scale their games as needed, similar to how they do this with graphics. Graphically speaking, developers can simply scale settings and resolutions down, along with other creative ways to get more juice out of the Switch 2's GPU if need be. And then they can implement DLSS to improve this performance further, with a minimal and hardly noticeable loss in fidelity in most occasions. But with 8 cores and optimization, it appears first-party games are definitely a non-issue and ported games just need more fine-tuning which the industry is already used to fine-tuning games for more budget devices out there, like the Xbox Series S and even the Steam Deck, which is starting to get Steam Deck preset setting options after updates apply to some Steam titles. Now, the Switch 2 isn't going to be having high frame rate 120 FPS targets with a mobile octa-core ARM-based 1.1 GHz CPU, 
but 30 FPS highly advanced AAA ports with scaled settings and scaled features down to make it work are definitely in the cards, it seems. This extra optimization is also expected by default here as you're moving a game from a big power hungry x86 processor, which is commonly used in not just these home consoles, but in computers as well, down to a more energy efficient ARM chip in a handheld console using considerably less energy. We also need to remember that the Nintendo Switch 1 had quite the impressive list of impossible ports. Games we never thought we would see running on the console, albeit there are usually many sacrifices to do so. But we managed to get No Man's Sky, Doom Eternal, The Witcher 3, and so much more ported to this console. And first party games like Pikmin 4 and Breath of the Wild, as just a few examples, were large, relatively gorgeous worlds for the Switch. And in the case of Pikmin, with over 100 characters on screen at once with all their own AI, all running on an old 2015 mobile quad-core CPU that ran just over 1 GHz. If the Switch 1 could do this, with all the new tech and resources available in the Nintendo Switch 2, I expect with the utmost certainty that this trend will continue, but in a next generational leap type of way. And what I mean by this is current generation games and games that are going to be coming out over the years are going to work on the Switch 2 the way that the Switch 1 was able to punch above its weight and keep up with a lot of newer titles for these newer consoles. Now, they may not be day one releases because this extra optimization just might take more time, but the Nintendo Switch sold very well and had a lot of people on the platform, which means a lot of opportunity to sell your game. And I can see the Switch 2 selling very well as well. So it's advantageous for developers to get their games on the Switch and spend that extra time. But I am fine with delayed releases if it means I can play on the go like I always do with my current Switch 1. That's the reason I have it, is to game on the go and get exposure to all the amazing first-party Nintendo games that I love and have loved since I was a kid. And that's all I really have to say about that. Now, before I throw in a little bonus here at the end for fun and answer the real infamous question that I could probably make a short video on covering this topic all on its own, I just want to be clear about one thing. The Switch 2 is in its own league. I often get comments saying that you can't compare the Switch to other consoles, and I agree. I like to compare the Switch 2 to other consoles just for context and for fun. But in reality, it really is its own thing. It uses completely different hardware and down to the instruction set than the other consoles and even the other PC handhelds. Nintendo is competitive due to a few key things. Market share, extremely popular and beloved franchises, and knowing how to make damn good games while providing a great user entertainment experience package with their consoles. They aren't looking to be other consoles in a traditional console war sense, and they want to provide a portal to their game worlds and their home-owned characters with a low-profile, succinct, yet capable enough hardware to achieve all that. With that said, finally, the million-dollar question and the fun little bonus I wanted to throw here at the very end of this video. Do I think the Switch 2 will run GTA 6? Well, maybe? I can absolutely see Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5 being brought over to the Switch 2 eventually, and due to the tech in the Switch 2 GPU, I believe with the necessary cutbacks to graphics, resolution, and even maybe aggressive use of DLSS with 30 FPS targets, most current and next generation AAA games will run at some level on the Switch 2. And so, with that said, we may just have a decent chance. Now, full disclaimer, it could be really ugly to do all this. Impossible ports for the Switch 1, while impressive, were often not pretty compared to other consoles and obviously PCs, especially when docked and seeing ultra-low resolutions trying to upscale at best as possible to 1080p on larger TVs. And a lot of TVs are 4K, so that kind of makes it a bit worse. But we have some hope here. Rockstar has said they do not have concerns getting GTA 6 to run on the Xbox Series S. Graphically speaking, in terms of pure compute, the Switch 2 isn't crazy far off from getting Series S levels of graphics on paper. Now we're comparing AMD's RDNA 2 architecture to NVIDIA's Ampere architecture. They're not all one and the same, and pure teraflop numbers doesn't quite cut it. There's a lot that goes into it. But if on paper the Series S pulls ahead by, what, 20 to 25% in pure compute, which is of course to be expected, and with DLSS used to decrease that delta a bit more, there might be some possibility that that optimization can transcend down to the Switch 2. 
Now, there are some concerns that I have. For starters, we don't know the full extent of what the A78C can handle. We have some good insight now, knowing most developers aren't complaining about the CPU when porting the game, at least, aside from more tweaking. But it was admitted that the Switch 2 CPU is the Achilles heel as well. So can the ARM CPU be tweaked in all the right ways to get an advanced and amazing looking game with advanced tech and features like a GTA 6 to run? That is the main question. An ARM CPU is going to be different to optimize for than an x86 CPU, as I've stated in the video already so far, and it's the information that I'm looking forward to the most right now as time goes on and we learn more about the Nintendo Switch 2, is how this CPU is going to be used and how it affects things. I also do have some concerns about the memory bandwidth of the Switch 2 especially for these more advanced AAA games. At just over 100 gigabytes a second, when docked, there is more to be desired, especially when compared to other console platforms. But it does fall in line with other portable gaming PCs. Now, of course, many of them are faster, but they're all in the same league. Ergo, if GTA 6 manages to run on portable gaming handheld PCs, then bandwidth wouldn't be the main reason for it not to be on the Switch 2 platform it might not just do it any favors in looking or performing better than it does if they even do release it. So with all that being said, I would have to say for the final verdict, unless the CPU can't handle any unforeseen tech for GTA 6 or games like GTA 6, whether that be super advanced AI, physics, an insane amount of game logic, whatever the reason might be, it's ultimately up to whatever the instructions per cycle, the true performance rating of a CPU is relative to these other consoles and if it makes sense or is even possible to go on there and likewise for memory bandwidth if the bandwidth requirements for a game like gta 6 to run prevent it from even running well at all on even the more advanced and more expensive handheld gaming pcs then i think we actually might be pleasantly surprised one day with a gta 6 switch to announcement i could also just be wishful thinking and overly hopeful especially after they put the gta trilogy out on the switch one while also just over analyzing all this but hey this video is just for fun for me at the end of the day and i enjoy talking about it and making it but I want to now know what you all think. Do you still have concerns over the Switch 2 CPU? Or ultimately, do you even think GTA 6 and games like it will end up on the Switch 2 at all? Comment down below what you think, and let's discuss this. I would love to engage with you guys, and I will see you there in the comments. I'll try to reply to as many as I can, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I appreciate you watching this far. It means the world to me. I hope you have a great day. Peace.